In this video I'll be assuming two things. One, that Monster Hunter World was your first Monster Hunter, or you're just not completely familiar with everything that Generations and now Generations Ultimate will offer. And two, that you're probably well versed in the weapon that I'll be discussing, so this won't be a full on guide, but rather a quick summary on the differences between the weapons in the two games. Hey guys, what's up? Right now I'm going to talk about the hammer. The hammer is another classic old school weapon that really hasn't changed throughout the games. It's always been simple in nature with the same mentality. Easy to play, hard to master. World is no different and the moveset has pretty much stayed the same, save for a couple of interesting changes. There were several quality of life changes and a couple of more aerial and sliding options, but there were mainly two noteworthy changes. The first was the addition of the Big Bang combo. The idea behind this combo was, well, basically the monsters already knocked down or knocked out, and now we want to do a high damage combo that we normally wouldn't get to do. That's what the Big Bang is for. Very satisfying to pull off. And the other change being the power charge mechanic, which to put it simply, sort of functions like a hunter art. It just increases the damage and KO power of the hammer. Although unlike a hunter art, it's really easy to apply. Overall, World has a strong iteration of Hammer, and the core of the weapon is still pretty much the same. Now even though the main objective and playstyle of the weapon is the same, the styles do change things up for the Hammer, and several of the styles for Hammer are actually pretty effective. The first being Guild. Guild, as we've been seeing, will be the unchanged moveset, with the nice bonus of having two Hunter Arts. The Hammer has pretty solid Hunter Arts, so Guild is a common option as you have the chance to choose a Hammer exclusive Hunter Art, or just one of the absolute Hunter Arts. Next up is Striker. Now Striker isn't too bad as you're able to take 3 Hunter Arts, but one of the main reasons it's not used is because we lose the Gulf Swing at the end of our basic combo. As we all know, the Gulf Swing is not only a satisfying attack to land, but one of the strongest moves we have, so to lose it kinda hurts Striker a bit. The next is Aerial, which is actually pretty fun. Of course Aerial style will be more of a mounting support kinda style, but Aerial can put out some pretty good damage as we have two options in the air. It's really satisfying to get some air dunks, and the cool thing about Aerial Hammer is that similar to Insect Glaive, once the monster is actually mounted and on the ground, we can still do our basic combo to put out some good damage. Next up is Adept, another popular style. We still have the moveset that we'd like, and we gain access to new charge moves after an Adept dodge. This is probably one of my favorite Adept styles, and it works really nicely with the Hammer. Next up is Brave. Now Brave is interesting because even though we have the basic combo we'd like, once we're in Brave mode, we gain access to new charge attacks that can be chained together. So Brave mode is all about the charge attacks, which synergizes really well with the Hunter Art I'm going to talk about soon. This style is probably the most different, but it's very fun and very satisfying to use once you know what to do. And last but not least is Alchemy, which is actually really pretty viable because it has the moveset from Guild with the ability to have 3 Hunter Arts. Alchemy Hammer is one of the few alchemy styles that'll still be pretty good and viable for speedruns in the game. Now let's quickly go over the Hunter Arts. The first is Spinning Meteor, and the concept behind this one is similar to the Big Bang combo in World. The monster is already downed, or it's already KO'd, and now I just want to do damage. And that's what the Spinning Meteor is for. It's mainly a damage Hunter Art. The opposite is true for the next Hunter Art, which is Typhoon Trigger. This one doesn't do as much damage, but has a lot of KO value. That being said, the hammer already does a solid job of getting KOs itself, so you won't really see this Hunter Art used too much. Although it still looks pretty cool. The next one is interesting, it's Provoke, it's pretty much just an area wide taunt. It'll make the monster focus on you, and it also slightly increases your defense. The last Hunter Art is very interesting and really cool. It's Pulsing Impact, and what it basically does is that it adds a little bonus attack to your charge attacks. After you do a charge attack, you'll do a little impact explosion that will do a portion of your raw and KO damage in the explosion. The higher the level of charge, the stronger the impact. It's a fun hunter overall, but it's especially fun with Brave since that's where we're going to be spamming the charge moves. In summary, if you're a hammer main, I think you're going to be pretty happy with Hammer and Generations Ultimate. While the core of the weapon will always be the same, we have a couple of different ways to go about it here, depending on the styles and the hunter art. Even with the new styles, I think you'll have an easy time transitioning in between Gen Ultimate and World. And in both games you'll find that the hammer is still very strong, still very solid at KOing, and a weapon that still will need timing and positioning to use at its fullest. I hope this helped you see the difference between your weapon and the two games. 
and I hope I gave you an idea of what to expect and what to look for when you try the weapon in Gen Ultimate. Thank you for watching, and happy hunting.